So we'll go ahead and get started with talking today about Exact Data Match. A little bit about us. Uh, my name is Douglas Baker. I am one of Patriot Cybersecurity Architects who helps customers deploy any of the Microsoft Security and Compliance Suite. I work for Patriot Consulting, which is uh, one of Microsoft's elite security partners. Uh, we're on the Partner Advisory Council, uh, Council and one of 25 of the Priority Managed Partners. So what is EDM? It's Microsoft's solution that lets you be exact with your data loss prevention policies. Microsoft has a great data classification service which can look for matches of patterns, regex type of things. But for organizations that want to go to the next level and they want to be very precise on their data loss prevention, not just a social security number bit being sent, but their customer's social security number, EDM gives us that capability and ability to handle that. There is a little bit of work that we're gonna have to do to set this up on the back end. We are going to need a couple of different things to, to make this happen. The first being is that we're gonna need to get into your data sets and really take a look at what you want to protect in this. Here is the example CSV that I'm hashing and uploading to it. And we have quite a few rows in this. To set this up, we're gonna come in and declare what type of data is in this EDM schema and which ones we wanna match on. We can support up to 32 columns of of uh, data that we can upload into the service and use as part of the match process. But only five of these columns can be our protected data sets. So in this case, I have medical record number as a searchable field, and we set that to true, and social security number, and we set that to true. To, to deploy the solution, we need to come in and create what's called an EDM schema, which is what you're seeing on the screen right here. And this is going to be telling the Microsoft solution all about the data set that we're going to be uploading. What we can do to make this even more precise than just the exact match and the matching a social security number is that we can use these accompanying fields that are in our data set to further validate that we have, you know, in this case, maybe Susie Mullen's information that we're sharing, right? So, you know, we can come into this and say, okay, well, it, this matches a social security number, right? That matches the pattern of it. Next thing we're going to check is we're going to check our entire database, you know, so if we have 100 million rows of data, it will go in through and parse to see, does this social security number pattern match against exactly Susie's? Well, if it does, that's a hit, right, on the EDM, which is great, but maybe it's just a random number. Maybe it's, there's a chance that's a random number. So what we then do is that we can search uh, in the rest of the body of the message to then look for if there's any of this other accompanying data nearby this number, right? So if I'm sending Susie Mullins, uh, information I would probably put in this, but in that PDF or in that Word document that I'm sharing of her, I might have reference to Susie, you know, her first name and her credit and her social security number, or maybe her radical necker number or date of birth or phone number. If we find any of these accompanying data pieces, we can say more confidently that that's a match in our environment. And so that's a very nice also additional feature. Again, all about illuminating the false positives in our uh, deployment, we can have all of this additional accompanying data as part of our policies and protect that from being shared out. So this is step one. We're going to declare all of our data. We have to get in and look at the data. Step two is declaring our rule pack. What is our thing that we're matching on? In this case, I have two sets of data pieces that I'm using in this uh, demo. Along with that, I have those other rows and or other columns that I'm going to be using as part of this match. So in this case, I'm gonna first look to see, is it a medical record number? Then is it my medical record number? And then after that, I'm gonna to look to see, is there any accompanying data nearby that helps me be more accurate with my match? Um, is there anything like that first name, last name, uh, date of birth, all of these fields, if I find that, I'm gonna say it's more accurate. In this case, I'm putting different rating scales. So if I find, just a medical record number and it matches to our user's medical record number, well, that's a, for my case, I put that as a 65% match. But if I find a first name near it, well, that's a 75% match, 85% match if I'm finding three accompanying pieces of data sets. And if I find four or above, well, that's a 95% match. I'm very confident that's Susie's uh, social security number or medical record number that's being shared then. 
So this is not really the, the work of deployment is determining which terms and which app match that you want to do for all of these policies. So that was step two. Now it's really a matter of adding these pieces of data to our DLP, right? So now that we've uploaded it into the system, we've made it available for uh, use in our DLP, we need to go extend our DLP policies to use that. In this case, in our health demo, health data demo, we have four different policies that we've created to take advantage of the various situations that we see commonly, you know, that we want to protect. So in this case, I have a low volume and low accuracy. That's the scenario where the end user has, you know, maybe put in a, uh, you know, just their social security number or just their credit card, but no accompanying data onto it. Um, we have different policies that we can allow for this. So in this case, I'm allowing my end users, if I am discovered one through two pieces of that data, to uh, to override our policies, our DLP match. In this case, they need to provide a business justification of why they want to share out that medical record number or social security number. But for some of our business purposes, that's needed, right? If a, if a end user requests an export of all of their data, we might have a medical record number that has a business justified reason to share it out. And so we're providing those end users the ability to override in this case. However, for mass exodus of our data, right, in this case, I'm declaring it high volume and high accuracy, anything above three pieces of medical record numbers, I'm not allowing those end users to share that out. Right. So this is how we can set up different sets of policies for different uh, thresholds of data, because certainly maybe there's a business reason that, you know, one to two or maybe a family of five medical record numbers need to be shared out. However, 500 pieces of medical record number or 500 of your customer social security, does that really need to be shared out via email? I'll let you all make that determination, but this solution can get more granular with any of those policies so that we can protect in those different scenarios.